in October 2013, Cochrane celebrated 20 years of collaboration in Quebec City, Canada, with 31,000 contributors from over 120 countries. It was a leading source of synthesized research evidence for health decisions, but it was also at a crossroads. We'd achieved many good things, but I think there were many other things, or many other ambitions that we still wanted to achieve and a feeling that we might be running out of steam and we needed to have a drive forward. Mark Wilson was the newly appointed CEO of Cochrane, tasked with proposing a strategic plan. What really challenged me, but also uh, energised me, was the tremendous engagement that we saw from the leaders of Cochrane. They already understood that Cochrane, to be everything that we wanted it to be, needed to change. At the annual general meeting in Quebec, a plan was approved by the membership. Strategy to 2020 would guide Cochrane through a process of radical transformation for the next six years. A bold push to go beyond producing evidence. Goal one of the strategy focused on the core of Cochrane's work, producing systematic reviews, especially prioritising evidence that meets the needs of end users. There's no point in just churning through lots of reviews that are never going to be picked up by anybody. And so this idea of mapping and matching and prioritising, I think, is, is important so that they are topics that patients want and the guideline developers want. Goal two centred on making Cochrane evidence accessible to end users. I didn't realise when we made a commitment to make Cochrane available in the six WHO essential languages, just what that would mean for individuals, whether they're citizens or healthcare professionals or policymakers around the world. In 2013, when the strategy was being developed, there were 4 million visits to Cochrane.org. In 2019, that had risen to 77 million visits. For goal three, Cochrane needed to pivot outwards and become engaged with stakeholders. Cochrane partnered with important health organisations around the globe. I'm really pleased with the relationship with um, WHO. It enables Cochrane to potentially influence WHO policies to get Cochrane evidence into things, but equally for WHO priorities to become activities for Cochrane moving forward. Goal four focused on building an effective and sustainable organisation something that outgoing board co-chair Lisa Barrow spoke to when addressing the annual general meeting in Cape Town. I'm delighted that we've invested in more ways to support people to get involved in Cochrane, such as our different levels of membership. I clearly remember the days when Cochrane was considered an exclusive organization and no one could really figure out how to get in. In the seven years of Strategy to 2020, Cochrane's membership grew from 28,000 collaborators to 82,000 members and supporters. 2020 has arrived with new healthcare challenges. We can see that the quality and the effectiveness of the Cochrane response is drawn in large part from the changes that we have made across the organisation in the last seven years. As a new decade begins, Cochrane remains committed to producing vitally needed evidence to confront the healthcare challenges ahead. We invite all of you to join us uh, in setting out the new path for, for Cochrane that will take us from the beginning of 2021 uh, for the next decade. <laughs>